Morning, or evening, grace, brethren, and sisters. Let's have everybody back along with us here with our Word Awakening and our weekend study. And I look forward to continuing in the book of Haggai uh, here this uh, afternoon. And it is great to have everyone uh, back with us. And we'll go ahead and get started here with some uh, prayer requests. Uh, really, though, just, uh, I guess, just one, though, right off the top. A couple do I have a couple here of prayer requests. My mother-in-law, as we've been mentioning, she'll be having another procedure done Friday to try to relieve some of the pain that she has from Virginia Tyler. As well as my wife, I have a special request regarding her, and also she's been having more stomach pain. Uh, so I pray for uh, Jennifer Cooper as well, as well as all the needs that are out there, all that you have, all those that are sick in body. Uh, we'll pray that God would just be with them and touch them in a special way, and that God would be with each and every one of us and just uh, <clears throat> help us in that he'd meet the physical need, financial need, emotional need. Uh, this, uh, financial need, physical need, emotional need, spiritual need, whatever it might be, that God would have his will and way, amen, in our hearts and in our lives. And so, and of course, also, as always, praying for revival. And uh, so we'll go ahead right now and have a word of prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the gifts of sin. Thank you for all that you've done, all the blessings that you've bestowed upon our hearts and upon our lives. And thank you so much, Lord, for the opportunity to pray and to meet over the cyber waves. And thank you for the privilege of prayer and for our salvation and all that you've done for us. And I just pray that you would be with us and guide us as we pray, that we would also have that uh, private time of praying, like we always mention. And uh, we do pray for these needs that have been been uh, mentioned here for my mother-in-law Jenny Tyler and my wife Jennifer Cooper that you just touch them physically as well as spiritually just give them that which they need father and for all the needs that our dear listeners have for the other physical needs I pray that you'd meet them those uh, with diseases cancer and uh, things and so forth those that are having surgeries and recovering from different procedures I pray that you'd be with them and for the financial need that you would meet that, you know what folks stand in need of, and spiritual needs that you would help them. We all have lost loved ones. Pray that you'd convict the lost and save them. Pray that you'd encourage those that are discouraged, reclaim down on this backslid, and those that might be holding grudges and so forth. I pray that you'd just be with them and to just help them have the victory over things in their life. Those people that are struggling, you know, with different uh, in different areas, you know, that want the victory, like over addictions and uh, whatever the need might be. I just pray that you'd meet it. And I pray, Lord, that you would just touch and help us all. <clears throat> to do what we ought to do, Lord, to build your uh, to build your work. And I pray that you just meet with us here today as we preach. Just, I got our hearts and minds, Lord God. Just give us clarity of thought and clarity of mind uh, to say what you'd have us to say and touch hearts and souls. Lord, may we be rebuked in the areas that we need to be rebuked to be receptive to what you have. We certainly pray for revival. Pray that you'd call more people into revival. Call more men to preach. Call more men to be revivalists and raise up more ladies to marry these people. And just help us, Lord God, to build your kingdom in that facet that'd be pleasing unto you, Lord God. Just help us all to exercise our gift. Lord God, and to give you all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul, Lord, just like uh, uh, D.L. Moody said, you know, the world is really yet to see what you can do in and through and for one individual who is totally committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, and I pray that you'd raise up people, you know, that would, that would have that heart, they just want to live for you, Lord, and just once again, meet with us here this evening, pray that you meet each every need, just give us peace and give us victory over things, and we'll certainly be careful to give you all and all the praise and all the glory from curse whether it and you alone. For it's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ we pray all these things. Amen. And amen. And I just, first of all, as we've promised here for a while now, we've been so busy and all, and uh, because of COVID, libraries and all have different hours. But uh, Monday, though, finally Monday, I promise you we are still going to have uh, we can at least give some promise we're going to have a couple more of our books published. Uh, we are going to have the commentary that we wrote on Jonah uh, published, so we will have that. And also the Song of Solomon, the commentary that we wrote on that, that will be published. As well as the book that we wrote about tobacco, all of those will be published on the book patch as well. And then also tomorrow we're going to try, as we've mentioned before, we have a new uh, a new publisher uh, that is going to put our books on Amazon and the Kobo e-reader, then maybe also even in Barnes & Noble. And uh, we will uh, try to also have some of that done, like with all the other books that we've already had published. And so with that being said, right now, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll put a link below, like to our, uh, to our, to my author page, like on the book patch. And so, you know, if, uh, you know, if you click on this Saturday or Sunday, then the new ones won't be there, but if you do that, though, uh, after uh, by Monday afternoon, they uh, they should be there. And so we'll leave that link below today, and also tomorrow for our Sunday sermon, and then also like with our uh, midweek prayer meeting as a well. 
<clears throat> for at least for the book patch. And as I said, if we have other things also, like on the Kobo e-reader and on Amazon, we'll also uh, we'll uh, we'll get links to that as soon as that is uh, as soon as that's done by Monday. And so thank you so much for uh, for that for all the support that people give to the writings and things that we've done. And then also in the very near future, possibly even one day this coming week, uh, like maybe Friday, if not Friday, probably also like by uh, by next Monday. We will uh, we'll also have our commentary on the book of Micah published. I'm uh, typing that up now, like what the way I do things, I write out, you know, what commentaries longhand, you know, like with an ink and paper, and then, you know, I type them up and put them in a publishing format. And so I'm almost through, though, with Micah, so we should have that one also available here in just a week or so, and we'll certainly also give the announcement about that as well. And so, just as we said, thank you so much for the support uh, for, uh, you know, for this ministry here. Of course, as I always say, we make no profit off of any of those. Uh, like right now on the book patch, our commentaries are very inexpensive. Uh, you know, well, you only pay a few dollars. I think the most expensive one might be five dollars, like at the most. Because uh, we make no profit, I make no profit off of that. The only thing people pay for is the cost of printing. You know, I get no profit at all of that. Of course, I kind of would have, well, the Kobo e-reader books uh, might even be free. I'm not very familiar with that. I've not looked at that yet. But I might even be able to put them up as free if they let me. And so, you know, if you just have a Kobo e-reader app, you know, you can get those for, for free. If I have to charge anything, you know, I'm going to charge the bare minimum. And so, uh... And so keep that in mind, as well as Amazon. Of course, I know that's a big place where a lot of people buy books, and so I'm not sure. Watch, you know, we'll have to put the price for those out on Amazon, but, you know, we'll put that as low as we possibly can. <clears throat> and so, uh, as we said, I appreciate all the prayers and our support towards, you know, our writings and everything. And then uh, also just want to make mention of, uh, really quick, as, as we've uh, as we mentioned here about a week ago, we're going to be having our spring revival April the 18th to the 22nd. So that is like the week right after Easter. Like Easter is that Sunday, I believe that. I'm pretty sure that's on the 17th. And then the 18th to the 22nd will be Monday to Friday uh, will, be, will be our revival. Yeah, it should be our revival there Monday to 20, uh, the 18th to the 22nd, that Monday to Friday. And as we said, this is going to be kind of similar to what we did in the last revival. Uh, we're going to be looking at a Bible character, and all five of these are going to be the minor prophets. We're going to be looking at Joel, Amos, <clears throat> uh, Joel, Amos, Micah, Nahum, and Habakkuk are going to be the five that we look at Monday to Friday. And so I got to thinking about that and kind of meditating on, and I thought, well, this is a lot like a Bible conference, you know, just kind of talking about, uh, you know, those books of the Bible. So, you know, really it is. And so I guess if I can, I'm just going to call this a Bible conference revival. Not every revival I think that we have is going to be a Bible conference revival, but this one is. I think probably we'll do kind of one or two maybe that we do a year, like in the future, are going to be like Bible conference revivals, which is, you know, much needed. You know, that's what it's all about, you know, it's the Word of God. And that's good, especially like for the Bible characters that I mentioned, you know, that are not as familiar, you know, that people are not as familiar with, like the Minor Prophets. And so, you know, we'll just call that a Bible conference revival in April. And we'll mention that more. Probably won't mention that anymore this month in February, but starting in March as we get a little closer to that. Uh, you know, a month or so out, we'll mention the Bible Conference Revival more, but go ahead, you know, and start praying for that. You know, and as always, not just praying for, you know, this week of meetings, but that God would revive our hearts, amen, have something that lasts in our heart. You know, that'll change our life, amen, as the Word of God certainly will. And so, got everything else going on, you know, uh, regularly scheduled for this week. Like we mentioned, going to be publishing some more books. Of course, we'll have our Sunday sermon tomorrow. We'll be continuing in the 35th Psalm, and then... Uh, <clears throat> And then, uh, of course, uh, next week, you know, we'll have, uh, you know, we'll have everything with the word Bible Institute and Temperance Awakening you know, going on as well, as well as our midweek prayer meeting here. And so I want to go ahead and get right into the Word of God. Only going to be really looking at the first, literally the first word of Haggai 1.8 here today, but a lot of stuff that we can get out of this one word. And if you look at the Bible there, you know what word that is. We'll go ahead, though, and read the whole the whole verse here of Haggai 1.8. It says, Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. And so continuing our study here, Be like Haggai, rebuild the work of God. And our Father, we sure do love you, and we do thank you for salvation and for the forgiveness of sin. And I'll just meet back over the cyber waves, and we come now just asking you to bless uh, 
uh, to bless her your word and that you would just uh, take it and that you would just apply it to our hearts and lives and help us here as we uh, go over these things. Now that we would just apply them, you know, to our lives and that we would just uh, be a better Christian, as we just said there, that we would have a revival in our hearts and that you'd remove every hindrance, every stone the lock, every demon of hell here. You know, this is very, very serious things that we're talking about and these are things that the devil's going to try to hinder and fight with. But I pray, Lord, that we'd ever be faithful and that uh, we would just uh, exposit your word and that way that'd be pleasing unto you and just give us that which we need from the preaching here this afternoon. Uh, for it's in the blessed name of Jesus Christ we pray all these things. Amen. And amen. <clears throat> and see, when our heart is in the right place, verse 8 will be the activity of our lives. See, uh, these Jews needed to get their hearts right and, and begin rebuilding the temple of the Lord in Haggai's time. See, that first letter there of verse 8 is go. So if you've been in church any amount of time, you've probably heard that word referenced, you know, heard messages, you know, preached about going for the Lord. And, uh, you know, it is used quite frequently, and it's in the Bible quite frequently. <clears throat> and that's something that we really do need to ponder and think about. Who will go for the Lord? Who will get out of the bed in the morning and go for the glory of God and not for their own self? And, you know, we say that even to laymen and lay women. You know, who will get out of the bed in the morning, you know, even if you work a secular job or if you're retired on disability, whatever, uh, you know, whatever situation might be, who's going to say, I'm living for God? I'm not just going out into this community for my own self to make my own money. I'm going to be a shining light, to be a witness for the Lord. <clears throat> and of course, like we've got a number of familiar texts that we can look at that. First one that we'll look at is in Mark 16, 15. It says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel to every creature, because, see, Jesus died for every soul. I know there are Calvinists that say he only died for, you know, for a chosen few, but if he only died for a chosen few, then, you know, why do we need to preach the gospel to every creature, if that was the case? See, the Lord died for every soul. That's why we're to preach the gospel to every creature. Jesus loved every soul so much that he gave his life to save them from their sin. See, Christ is sacrifice. It's good for Jews and Gentiles. You know, it doesn't matter what somebody's skin color is or what their nationality is. Christ, Christ loved them all so much that he died for them. You know, it doesn't matter what somebody's social class is. If they're, you know, white collar, blue collar, working class, poverty, middle class, upper class, that person is an individual that Jesus died for. You know, and as we often mention here with this ministry, you know, we all have our own gift, you know, like I'm reaching, you know, particularly, you know, deaf blind and, uh, you know, deaf blind, you know, special needs, you know, type people and all. And you know, I run a Bible Institute and, you know, Temperance Awakening and Addictions Help Ministry and all that stuff. But, you know, our own path in life, we have our own path in life, but as a people of God, we're to be reaching the world. See, that's, you know, the Lord's body functioning, you know, as one body. You know, my hand does what my eyes can't do. You know, my hand can feel. You know, my hand can pick up things. My hand can write. But, you know, my eyes, you know, they can see. But, see, reaching the world, you know, as a people of God, you know, that's how one church, you know, reaches the world, you know, reaches a vast array of people. You know, people all over the world and all different kinds of people. People that speak different languages. You know, deaf people, blind people, deaf-blind people. But see, as a people of God, though, we're to be reaching the world. You know, we need Bible preachers at Times Square in Manhattan. You know, in Manhattan, New York, you know, often we think of missions. You know, we think of, like, poor people, like impoverished countries. But, you know, Jesus died for the wealthy. You know, we need people reaching the wealthy, you know, of New York City, you know, the wealthy of Ottawa, Canada, you know, the wealthy of Paris, France. You know, we need people in the impoverished neighborhoods of Detroit, Michigan. You know, that might sound kind of scary and all, but, you know, Jesus died for those people as well. <coughs> as I just said, the Lord showed me the need for Bible preachers reaching the deaf-blind and deaf-blind people of upstate New York, and I accepted that call. You know, like we need Bible preachers, you know, reaching the French in Quebec, Canada, and the, the Spanish-speaking of Peru, South America. You know, this entire world is a mission field, like you might have heard of that before. You know, there are a couple of churches, 
like at the exit door, you know, of their church, you know, it'll say, you are now entering the mission field. You know, that's true. You know, that's, you know, this world, you know, is a mission field. You know, your community, you know, is a mission field. You know, like we often talk about that, you know, missionaries have a, having a burden for the world. You know, I'm one of those, you know, I want people like down south, you know, to have a burden, you know, for like deaf blind and deaf blind special needs people of, of upstate New York. Yes. And I'm thankful for those that do. You know, just in this last couple of weeks, I actually had some very generous love offerings, you know, to our property. You know, to the property fund that we have to buy property up there. You know, but your community where you live, that's your mission field. And please tell me this, if, if you don't have a burden for the people in your own community, you know, how can you have a burden for somebody in another state or another country, people that you've never seen before? See, your own community, you know, is your mission field. You ought to have a burden for people right there that live where you live, you know, for your relatives, you know, your co-workers, your acquaintances. But the whole world, though, is a mission field, and if you're going to say, well, I'm in the, you know, I'm in the perfect will of God, living in Warrior, Alabama, or Spartanburg, South Carolina, or, you know, wherever else, you know, this is, that's where you're from, but, you know, you're in the will of God there, you know, doing whatever, you know, working a secular job, or, you know, maybe in a ministry, whatever. <clears throat> well, if you're in the perfect will of God, then you ought to have a burden for those people there of your community. You know, have a burden for the church that you're a member at. See, like we see also in Mark 16, 15, what are we supposed to be doing? Preaching the gospel. It says, preach the gospel. You know, that's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It just says in Romans 1, 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. See, it's the gospel that has the power to save souls. You know, that's why we preach the gospel. You know, first and foremost, the lost. You know, talking here about lost people. You know, we'll get to some more of that here in just a moment. But, you know, we've got the great example of Jesus who was always preaching the gospel. Like in Matthew 4.23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Matthew 9.35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Mark 1.14 Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. <clears throat> in like Mark 13.10 says, but when they shall, see, is that right here? Should be. Sorry, yeah, Mark 13, 10. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. See, the first thing the nations need is the gospel. That's their first need. See, that's, you know, why missions work. You know, that's preaching the gospel. You know, that's establishing sound, you know, Bible-believing churches. You know, there, I know there are other things in missions, you know, I'm for, you know, feeding the hungry and, you know, setting up, you know, health care facilities and so forth. But the first need that people need is the gospel preached to them. You know, in a church, you know, the establishment, you know, that's what the New Testament established. You know, the New Testament local church. Luke 9, 6, and they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. See, the twelve disciples, you know, they preached the gospel. Acts 8, 25. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. See, then 
Acts 14, 7. And there they preached the gospel. That's talking about Paul and Barnabas when they were in Iconium. See, Paul and Barnabas preached the gospel. See, the apostle Paul, he emphasized the need to preach the gospel, which is Christ and him crucified. 1 Corinthians 1.23 He said, But we preach Christ crucified under the Jews a stumbling block and under the Greeks foolishness. But see, sinners, they first need to hear the gospel so that they can be saved. You know, like with this ministry here, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, being revived, being a student of the Bible, you know, having a real heart for God, you know, giving your time for good to God. But see, with lost people, the first thing they have to do is to be saved. See, we can't lose sight of that. You know, we preach the gospel so that sinners will be saved. You know, yes, we believe in standards. <clears throat> you know, like I, me and my wife were actually talking about that a couple of months ago. You know, like whenever we were, you know, talking about having, you know, a church bylaws, you know, a church constitution and everything. And yes, you know, we believe in standards, you know, for church members and, you know, people that hold offices in a church. And just like I preach our preacher boys in our Bible Institute, you know, teach to them. You know, when it comes, you know, to lost people coming and visiting our churches, you know, we extend our hand to them, shake their hand and say, good to have you here. You know, that doesn't mean that we approve of the life they're living but, you know, we're great to have them in our churches to hear the gospel preached. You know, like I said, I'm a church planner. You know, certainly, you know, the first thing I'm going to do probably for quite the while, you know, is to preach the gospel, you know, so that sinners can get saved. See, and then after that, after salvation, you know, we have the obligation as a church, you know, to make disciples. You know, rolling right along here. You know, like we're to go, we're to go into all the world, we're to preach. But then after we see people saved, really, that's just the beginning. You know, we can, you know, we're really, literally, we, we can say just the beginning, you know, the beginning of a person's Christian life. Because what else did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20? He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto, the, even unto the end of the world. Amen. See, with this command, we're not to be slack in our teaching. Like Jesus said, teaching them to observe all things. See, we're to teach our believers all of the Word of God. Like Acts 20, 27. It says, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. You know, preachers are to preach all the counsel of the Word of God. You know, the Bible is to have preeminence of all, you know, of all things in our lives. Like it says in Colossians 1.18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who's the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. The Bible has the wisdom and instruction to help us with all aspects of our lives. I've often heard people say that, you know, they wish newborn babies, you've probably heard that too. You know, like you see that maybe like from people on TV shows and movies and so forth. You know, they wish newborn babies came with instructions, you know, with an instruction manual. Well, you know, I'm glad to say that there is an instruction manual for raising children. It's called the Holy Bible. You know, the Bible will guide people in raising children, finances, marriage, family life, church life, civil duty, everything. You know, and the truth is, you know, we can't... <clears throat> We can't figure out any of these things on our, you know, on our own. You know, we can't figure out, you know, how to raise children, you know, our financial life, our, you know, marriage and family life and so forth. We got to have the wisdom of God's Word, you know, to help us with all these things. Like I mentioned this before, you know, we need to be like George Mueller, you know, that great preacher of the 1800s. He preached and, you know, he, he prayed, rather prayed and consulted the Bible about every aspect of his life. You know, how did he run a children's orphanage and rely only on willing donations to sustain his orphanages? You know, you know that was he was in full-time ministry. You know, he didn't work a secular job or anything. 
you know, he just relied on donations, you know, for his livelihood and, you know, for those orphanages and, you know, the livelihood of those children. You know, he consulted God about every aspect of his life. You know, that's how he was able to do it. You know, when Brother Mueller was 90 years old, somebody asked him, how did he stay in such good health mentally and physically by running a children's orphanages? You know, this is, I said, when he was 90 years old and still in good health, they said, you know, how have you stayed in such good health, both mentally and physically, you know, when running that, when running those children's orphanages and only relying on willing donations? See, and he started off, if you know the story, he started off like with one small orphanage and then that just grew to several buildings. And Brother Mueller replied to him, he said it was because he never knowingly, never knowingly did anything contrary to the Lord's will. Now does that mean he was sinlessly perfect? No, like Brother Mueller said. He said, I never knowingly did anything to, you know, contrary to God's will. In my own ignorance, yes, I made mistakes and I did things God didn't want me to do. But that was only my own ignorance. That's something I didn't knowingly do. He never knowingly knowingly did anything contrary to the Lord's will, and he consulted God about everything, you know, that had to do with his life. You know, and what a wonderful, you know, testimony that that is, you know, how true. And so talking here about uh, summing it up, you know, teaching, you know, all the counsel, you know, like of the Bible and everything... Well, why is it that we do that? You know, why is it that we should, you know, teach believers all things in the Bible? You know, why? You know, Genesis to do, you know, Genesis to Revelation. You know, everything, you know, every aspect of our life, talking about, you know, raising children, our, you know, our finances, you know, our marriage, you know, etc., etc. It's because God wants all the heart of a person. Of course, that's nothing new to people that, you know, listen to me regularly. You know, the Bible never endorses having a 75%, 50%, or 25% heart for God. It says all your heart a number of times in the Bible. You know, and we'll leave you with these few verses. Like Deuteronomy 6, 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Deuteronomy 10, 12. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Mark 12, Mark 12, 30, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Luke 10, 27. And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. See, where to go? He preached the gospel and also make disciples. See, it's good that people are saved, and which that's something people need to get better with. You know, there's way too much, this easy believism has gotten way, way too much into people. You know, there, there are far too many people that are, you know, profess saved when they're really not. How you know that? Well, for starters, I was one of them. You know, I was one of them that made a profession as a seven-year-old boy. Now, can children be saved? Absolutely. But a lot of this, you know, has to do with children. You know, we're giving a lot of children a lot of false hope. I'm not going to sound this long because this really isn't the message, but it needs to be said. You know, that's the gospel. That needs to be said. Yes, you know, children, you know, can certainly be saved. But a lot of children, you know, profess to be saved when they're really not. Said I was one of them. <clears throat> like uh, like uh, the pastor of the church I come from in South Carolina. He's also my first cousin. He was one of them. You know, he made a profession when he was a young kid, but really wouldn't say. I know lots of people like that. My mom was one of them. <laughs> I mean, I've got, you know, relatives know lots of people. That's only something we need to get better at, is calling people saved whenever they're really not. And we can only know our heart, but, you know, we need to, you know, we need to look for evidence in a person's life that they've really been saved. You know, and as we said, repentance is a part of that. You know, we need to make sure... You know, that people, you know, they understand repentance. You know, we repent of our sin and we have faith toward God. And then after that, you know, we make disciples of people. You know, certainly very slack in that area. You know, extremely, extremely slack. Like I was listening to a fella, 
I've been listening to a fellow who preached a uh, like who preached a preacher's meeting, like about preaching, like about homiletics, and like he was saying, you know, they're just you know far, you know, too too far too many preachers, far too few. That's what I'm going to say. Far too few preachers, you know, who are who are you know students of the Bible, you know, far far too few preachers. You know, who really, really know the Bible. You know, too many ignorant preachers that, you know, don't know the Bible. <clears throat> you know, like I say myself, you know, I know preachers that way. You know, they can name the top 25, you know, college football, you know, teams when, you know, football season's going on. But they couldn't even name all the books of the Bible. They couldn't name all, you know, they couldn't name all 12 of the original disciples. They couldn't name all of the prophets of the Old Testament. You know, that's trickled down, you know, to our people. You know, we have lots of, you know, just ignorant people in churches. You know, not only are they ignorant, but that just shows they don't have a heart for God. You know, they know nothing about the Bible. They know nothing about being a student of the Bible. They know nothing about having a prayer journal. You know, they know nothing about having a prayer life. You know, just so, so far from revival. <clears throat> you know, that's where it starts. We got to get in prayer. We got to get in the Word. And so let's all take this challenge and do our very, very best with it. I just pray that God would just help us all and that we'd ever be faithful. Like we said, we mentioned salvation there. You want any more help with that? Just email us there. Said God did make salvation easy. You know, it, it is easy to be saved. A child can certainly understand it, but, you know, we do want everybody to understand it. You know, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For with a mouth confession is made unto God, and with a heart we believe unto righteousness. That's repentance. You know, we ask the Lord to forgive us our sins, and we repent of our sins, and we ask the Lord to save us, and he certainly will do it. Amen. So you want to pray that prayer? You know, go ahead and give your heart to God. You know, tell the Lord you accept him as your Savior. If you want the forgiveness of sin, ask him to forgive you of your sins and repent of your sins, and he'll be faithful and just to do it. And as we said, Said our email address is there if we can help you with that in any way or anything else, like anything else we've mentioned, or like we mentioned books that we have that we're going to be publishing. You want any help with Bible study resources, you know, not just what I have, uh, you know, but anything else, you know, you want help with Bible dick, you know, finding a good Bible dictionary, you know, Strong's Concordance, you know, Bible commentaries. Uh, want help, you know, maybe with a prayer journal, anything, you know, that's what we're here for. You know, we'll be happy to help you with that. You know, we're not going to ask you for any money. We're not, you know, we're not charging, you know, any money for that. You know, not at all. You know, that's not what I do. You know, if, you know, if somebody, you know, wants to talk to me all day long about the Bible or pray all day long, I'll do it. Amen. And I won't charge them a dime. Why not? Because I know God will take care of me and God will bless me for it. I've seen him too many times. I live by faith. I was just telling a brother that earlier, you know, that's just like I mentioned George Mueller, like a man who just, you know, lived off of willing donations. That's what the Lord told me to do. Now, we do go to church. George Mueller was a person that didn't even go, like, to churches, you know, but we do go, like, to churches, you know, for support for people that would like, you know, to support us on a monthly basis or give us a love offering. So I actually do a little bit more than George Mueller did, but... You know, when it comes to things like my books and all that, you know, I'm not making any profit off of that. You know, praying with anybody, helping anybody in any way, you know, either to be saved or to, you know, help you be a better student of the Bible, a better prayer warrior, or whatever. You reach out to us and you let us know if we can help you in any way. And we'll certainly be more than happy, you know, thrill our hearts to do that, you know, to help God's people. That's what it's all about. You know, that's what this ministry is about. It's not me up here wanting your money. It's about me wanting to help people have a heart for revival and be a... Be the right Christian, be the right student of God's word, and fulfill the will of God for your life. Amen. So thank you so much for being with us, as we said. And like I said, we can help you in any way. Just reach out to us there. And we'll be right back here tomorrow with our Sunday sermon, continuing in Psalm 35. So you'll be praying for us. We'll be praying for everybody out there. And until then, we'll close in prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the end of sin. Thank you, Father, that you've done all your blessings. You've bestowed upon our hearts and upon our lives, Lord. And just we do thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to have this ministry. Thank you, Lord, for the support of your people. You know, the people that we have that just willingly give, you know, like we had in the last couple of weeks. You know, we didn't ask for anything. You know, we uh, you know we went to that church and all, just wanted to be with the people. Uh, but, you know, people there, you know, they just, you know, poured out their love, you know, toward us. And were such a great blessing and helped us. And thank you so much for the people that have a heart, you know, that have a heart for you, that have a heart for missions, that have a heart for revival. You know, that want to see you do a work in people's hearts and people's lives. We thank you so much for that. And as always, you know, we're praying for you to call more. 
You know, that's what this world needs. You know, we need more George Mueller's. We need more Charles Finney's. We need more John Wesley's, George Whitfield's, Charles Wesley's. You know, people that just have a whole heart for you. You know, that want to serve you with all their heart, mind, and soul as we went over here today. Lord, and I pray you'd raise more people up like that. And even for laymen and laywomen, you know, there's no reason, you know, why they can't have your power. Like I, I got that quote in my, in my prayer journal from George Mueller who said that, you know, you hadn't been called to a full-time ministry. You know, there's no reason why you can't have the power of God and why you can't have a great abundance of answered prayer. Because <coughs> you don't call everybody to preach. But, uh, you know, even laymen and laywomen, you know, they can certainly have your power and be that witness in their community. And I pray that we'd all just be faithful and exercise, you know, that gift you've given us. Like some people are just meant to be prayer warriors. You know, we think of men like Daniel Nash and Abel Clary, you know, Charles Finney's best friends. You know, they were men who were prayer warriors. They didn't start schools or Bible colleges or write books. You know, they were just people that prayed and fasted and know how we need that ministry as well. You know, need prayer warriors. But it's whatever it is, Lord, that you'd have people to do. You know, you know that. You know, you know, you know the calling that people are to have. You know, you call people. You know, you you got people on their path, and I just pray that all of us would be faithful to go down that path that you have for us, and just use us, Lord, for your honor and glory, and bring us back to the next point of time. If there is one lost, I pray you would convict them and save them. You know, one discourage, encourage them. One backstab to claim them. One trying to get the victory, help them get the victory. And just once again, have your will and way in our lives. And we'll certainly be careful to give you all and all the praise and all glory for everything, Lord, as we ask that you give us the strength and, uh, you know, the strength and uh, and all to do what you'd have us do. First, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, folks, for being with us. And we'll see you tomorrow for our Sunday sermon. Until then, till the day breaks and the shadows flee away, I am Dr. Coop and I love you and I appreciate you.